<clears throat> hey guys, it's Brett from IBMA. How's it going? Just um, if you're watching this video, just let me know how the um, how the uh, video quality looks like that. If you're Haxi or Toby, don't flame me too much. Okay, guys. Well, I was practicing some stance work and the usual stuff this morning, as you have to do. Um, and what I thought I'd do is I'd do a little bit of a chat and a little bit of a, well, not a chat, but a, like a demo slash chat of um, different stances um, and different points about the stances that I've picked up over the, over the years of doing martial arts. So, so you know, as a beginner in martial arts, um, you think, you know, you just think, oh, yeah, there's a front stance. You know, there's, there's, yeah, there's just a front stance and a back stance or whatever, and there's horse stance. So as a beginner in martial arts, the stances are pretty rudimentary and you think that they're defensive postures, which they are, um, but there's a lot of mechanics that goes into them. And if you don't have the um, benefit of say, studying Okinawan Karate or in-depth study um, of another kind of martial art, um, be it a Kung Fu or Wing Chun or Shaolin Kung Fu, if you don't study into the stances yourself, um, you you know you may not pick these bits up it takes some time to develop so what I'm going to do why I've done this live video um, is because I'm going to use if I can I'm going to use a camera to show you one of the best tips on stances because stances as well as being one self-supporting structures so there's the old saying that you build you, you train stances to, to build your muscles um, and that's true but it's not it's not it's not exactly true because they're self-supporting structures. So st your stances should inherently be um, easy to hold uh, and they should hold themselves up. So I'll give you an example of that. Yeah, like a bridge. Yeah, like the legs of a bridge. You don't build a bridge that doesn't have it within physics supporting capabilities. So that's one thing of your stances. If you're getting into your stance and you're using all your muscles to hold you into your stance, then that's that's incorrect yeah that's wrong you're wasting energy and in, in in history in the past like in battle or whatever you'd be wasting energy you wouldn't be using that stance so that's one stance is a self-supporting structure so we'll go into that um, and I'll show you a little tip down here that I've got so if I turn this to this stances are also about if I can do it yeah stances are also about covering ground and they're about your center line yeah, and your your um, center of balance. Um, I think it's called, yeah, something, center of gravity, sorry. So, one of the best pieces of advice I ever managed to see or get about stances, and you see it in a lot of traditional um, uh, Okinawan uh, karate books and texts, and the reason why the texts are good is because you can actually see it, they draw it, yeah? So one of the best things I can say is I, I always tell people, imagine a square on the ground. Now I've just got a small square, the square might be probably a bit bigger than this. So within this square we've got a circle, uh, it's a shitty circle, we've got a triangle, um, it's a crappy triangle, and then you've got two lines that intersect and there's a little dot in the middle there, that's your center of gravity, yeah? And, and usually you want to take up, using what, I don't know if you guys have heard of the pyramid, the idea of the pyramid, but it's a wide base and a short top and it causes you to be stable. This is another principle within your stances, wide base that tapers up to a point. So you have to take up as much of this square as you can when you're performing your stances um, and by, by that way, uh, or engage your muscles into as much of, a, of this square and by that way um, you're, you're, you're in a good position. You're, you're, you've got a, a large surface area onto the floor, yeah? Um, it also does hip alignment. So for instance, usually you're, if you're in a normal, like if you're going to fight someone, you're in a normal position, you're starting off, um, your back foot, say, for a front stance or an hourglass stance, your black foot will be on the bottom right-hand side of the square and your front foot will be on the front left-hand side of the square, yeah? And in this way, if I, if I face my hips in line with this line, in this way you can see this line between my ankles here, yeah? So that straight line also represents my hips. And when things are aligned in your body, they're strong, yeah? When you break alignment, they go weak. 
So if you can draw lines in within your body, um, you're in a strong position. And here is one of the first, um, obviously first easy basic stances, which is just like a split leg stance or a, a yeah, a, more than a natural stance, but yeah, the, the, the slightly more than shoulder width apart feet, yeah? And already, already as demonstrated here, if you, if you, this is the sort of stance you'll see, like you see the Shaolin monk standing in um, prior to doing a form. It's not, it's not quite feet together, but, but this is something I want you to do. So when you break, when you break this position, and you're going into your first like stance, I want you guys to imagine this line that's in between your hips. Um, oh, the device is going crazy. So don't imagine you're straight on a line. Imagine you're on an angle. Imagine you're on an angle within this square. Yeah, and that goes for if you do the splits as well. And it's the same idea, yeah? You can feel um, the straight line of your hips. You can feel the force equally distributed between both feet. Uh, and you can, you can raise up uh, and you can even lean a bit forward and you can feel that you're covering uh, that, you know, by, by even tilting forward, you can cover even more of that surface area within the, within the square, yeah? So that's, that's the sort of feeling that you need. That's why um, most fighting stances are obviously in that 90 degree, um, 90 degree angle here. Is it 90? 90 or 45, whatever that angle is. You know the one I'm talking about, like an L, yeah? Yeah, and also obviously the position of your feet make a difference. So if one foot, if on the back right hand side of the square, if one foot is pointing uh, in line with the line of the square and the other is pointing in line with the other angle, then you can see how that's different. Look at the line, how it traces through, look how it traces through the, the heels. See that line tracing through the heels? Yeah. That is now becomes your um, like kibadach or what you would call an, a, a, a sumo style um, horse stance with the feet out, yeah? And you can see how, like I said, that line traces through the feet. Nice and boring, but it's, it's the mechanics of how it works, yeah? Um, and obviously this is, this is a posture you use and it's traditionally used in a lot of weapon work because my center line is traced down the middle here. So in this traditional sumo style kibadach uh, horse stance, which is different to the Chinese one where the feet are in, as you can see, the forces become different. But in this different kind of horse stance here with the feet uh, in line with the square, yeah, my, if I turn the camera, I don't know how I do this. Yeah, awesome. Oh no, wait a minute. No, I didn't need to do that. Um, if there's the enemy in front of me, my center line is tracing right up the enemy. And that's another main point for stances. Like, so a lot of people would hold this stance with their foot, their lead foot on the center line. And that's fine because you're totally covering the center line. But still remember that principle um, of this, this gap the space that you need to cover. If you're holding this position just flat on the line, absolutely flat, yeah, so in effect, it's the same as me standing here and here. I'm not covering as much of this square. If I stand there and there, front foot there, back foot there, I'm not covering as much of this surface area on the floor as if I stand top left and bottom right. And that's one of the keys to the, I'd say, to the secrets of the stances in martial arts, yeah? One of the keys to the secrets of the stances is covering, if I repeat myself, this surface area within the square here, yeah? So repeat one more time. Traditional Kibadach horse stance style for covering this surface area front foot here back foot here and now my center of gravity is here and i'm covering my hips are covering where when they tilt 
all this surface area here. And my center line is down the middle of my body. And if I trace it up with my hand, there's my enemy. Yeah? But look at my legs. So in effect, my left leg is on the outside of my enemy. Yeah? And my right leg is on the outside of my enemy. And I'm covering, if you draw a line from here, I'm covering a nice chunk of square. Yeah? So they're just going through some mechanics of the stances, but you can see now if I if I just repeat myself again, a lot of people would stand in fr like front stance. Um, their front foot would be there and their back foot would be here. And that's fine for certain weapon work as well. But just remember, if you do that, like I said, for fist fighting or whatever, and just know, because if you don't know it, you can't do it. But just know that if you do do that and you stand there and there in what most people would think is a really nice defended front stance, you have very little of this square covered. Yeah, you have little to none of it covered and you will easily be toppled. And that's why these reflecting angles of front, front left, bottom right and front right, bottom left are where we want to be standing. Yeah, that's where we want our stances to be. OK. There. And notice again, like I said, look, look at the line my feet trace. Yeah, I know this is a bit boring and stuff for people, but it's a it's a it's an awesome little science to to get into. Look at the line my feet trace. Yeah. Not only do they trace a line from the center here, boom, into my heels. Yeah. Yeah. But they also trace a line along the edge of the square. Yeah. And that means stability. That means when you crouch down into your traditional, this is a traditional sumo style um, Kibadach horse stance position, not the Chinese style where the knees are closed. That's different. But this, when you when you when you squat down at that position, you're taking up loads of center center area, and it's really awesome. Yeah, really nice space taken. Um, and and like I said, your center line is uh, straight down the middle. You're covering all that space. So if I turn this to me now. Um, yeah, I'll turn this to me and put it in for a second. So that's one aspect. Bit boring. Oh no, hold on. Annoying. Ah, there we go. Now we'll leave. I should have set this up before. Here we go. All right, guys. So we're just going through some some stance stuff. So, like I said, if I'm if I'm standing with if I'm standing if I'm standing with my front foot here and my back foot here, look at that area that I'm covering. You can't you can't you can't really see it on the floor, but look at this nice and this is the pyramid. Yeah, this is the pyramid of of fresh on top, stable below. This is why. Um, traditional Okinawan Karate, and this is why like martial arts done correctly looks a certain way, because you physics looks a certain way. Physics is angular, yeah, and if you, if you have people standing and reflecting forces um, in the correct way through their body, it'll look in a certain way. And you think, oh, well, what does he mean by reflecting forces? Well, as I was saying, if you're standing front foot here, back foot here, then look at the look at the line, the straight line that is intersecting your hips. And like I said, lines, things that are in line, like your bones, when they're aligned, it's strong. It's also self-supporting because you're not wasting muscle to keep the body upright and straight. Yeah, it's easy. And once again, like I said, if I am standing with my feet either side of that square, yeah, and just just a front facing posture, yeah, it is different. I mean, you will see here, if I'm fighting you now, I'm here and I have 
I have a nice stability within my legs to move in and out of this arc, to change into other center line covering postures or movements. But the main thing is I'm covering a lot of ground in the middle. It's almost like a grappler's stance. And that means that also means I can spring a lot of power off the floor. Um, and it also means if someone comes in at me, that you've got a lot of rooting. That's where rooting comes from. Yeah, you've got a lot of ground area covered where you can then um, be solid. Yeah, and you can also go real low in that solid posture and it's not taxing your body because you're standing within the, the square that I showed you. Yeah. So for anyone who's just popped along, we're talking about the, the square that you form on the floor mechanically that you should do when you're using stances. We're talking about how you should imagine a square on the floor and you should stand on these corners of the square. Front leg on one front corner, back leg on one back corner, and that means the surface area that you're covering within the square that you form on the floor is awesome and it gives you that pyramid, um, pyramid stability of a wide base and a top, yeah? Wide base, short top, fresh on top, stable below, as the old Kung Fu saying goes. Um, yeah, and then as I was saying, if I am standing in that way, front front foot on the front, front foot on the front left, bottom foot on the back, I'm covering a nice distance here. I've got, a, I've got an area I can play with, I'm nice and stable. That's a good stance, yeah? From there, my center line is drawn down the middle of me, and that's great, because that's where it should be. Now what I can do, is I can come to the middle of that square with my feet and stand totally straight. And then I'm, I'm, on, I'm actually on my center line. So it's kind of cool because if I get you guys the square, if I'm standing with the front foot here and the back foot here, and I'm taking up this much space on the floor, yeah, like I should be, that's a good mechanic. That's a benefit to me of stability, rooting, ground, for reflecting forces. That's awesome. If I want the benefit of then covering my center line with my posture, unfortunately for me, I have to shift my feet, front foot here, back foot here, and you can see by doing that, we'll switch to a view on the floor, that I lose stability. Yeah, so you need to know, that. I'm sure you guys do. So that's the, that would be, say, a position like your front hourglass stance or your bow arrow stance, yeah, Mabu, yeah, that, that, that covers the enemy is in the middle, your front foot is on is covering the outside, your back foot is on the, on, is on the other side, it's slightly turned in so that you, you know you can, you're not getting kicked in the groin, but it's actually mainly slightly turned in so you can chamber your hips and you can root. Um, but you can, you're covering that square, but you can then, you can then flatten off from that posture into say a cat posture that covers the, the center line perfectly, but you lose the rooting, yeah? You lose that rooting that you've got from covering that square. But don't be dismayed. We'll show you on the floor in a minute. I'll flip the camera around. Don't be dismayed because within that circle, I've drawn a crappy square and no, that's not the, that's not the freaking Star Trek Enterprise logo or some dodgy satanic triangle. Um, this is then this is then the other sort of routing you need to work on. So if you're not covering this entire square, um, you need to try and work on this triangle. I don't know if you guys can see the triangle, but there it is. So that was a perfect example of what would happen in cat cat stance. Yeah. Um, so you would you will try to um, obviously <laughs> ideally with cat stance you'd have three feet because you want you want as much you want as many points of this square covered but we don't have three feet so that's why usually with cat stance you flatten off the back foot to try and take up as much of this base as you can and you point the front toe to try and get that point right in the middle and again your center of gravity will remain around in the center there, yeah? So that's pretty much what it'll do. So we'll show you that on the floor. 
Another thing just to say, guys, is your, like I said, your stances should be self-supporting. Yeah. So even if you're not within, even if you're you know, working within this circle, obviously the more you bring it in, the more you have to engage muscles to get things into alignment. But at a wider extent, your your stances should be self-supporting. Um, and how you how you achieve that self-supportingness is by these lines. Yeah. That's the reason why, uh, like say traditional kibbutz like horse stance. Um, even even Chinese horse stance where the where the toes are in, it'll be so much easier for you to do if you just imagine you're doing it on sorry table each side of this square. Yeah, the square can be bigger than this, but let's give you an example. Yeah, and it also makes a, a better fighting posture. It makes you move better. It's, it's everything's a lot better. Okay, so here's it on the floor. Yep. Back foot on there. Back foot on there. There's the nice circle that I'm covering. Let's say our, our actual front is here. So this is, what, this is what confuses people, but this is the main, this is the meat and bones martial arts fighting stance. The front, our enemy is here, but we're turned sideways so we're actually facing here like technically we're facing here we're facing in line with this line that's our real front but this is our actual front yeah because that's where the enemy is and the reason for that is again i can't face an enemy here because look at my square i've got alignment here i've got coverage but you'll just push me straight back over because I'm only, that's all the area I'm covering is this back triangle. Whereas if I'm intersecting these edges of the square, I'm covering this whole square within my center line. Yeah? Awesomeness. Yeah? Doom. And what I mean about self-supporting uh, structure is that if you go wider with this stance, you should still be intersecting these lines. I mean, it's up to you that, that that's traditional Chinese style with the toes in. But that's got other aspects to do with like the knees rooting. But if the feet are out and you're crouching, it's a more open posture. But again, you can see that my feet are running parallel with the edges of this, this um, square. And anyone in between uh, is my center line and there'll be some awesome rooting going there yeah if you straighten the front leg it's easy to do and you could stand like this all day yeah so if i put the camera down here for anyone who's left watching my boring talk about stances for 20 minutes if i put the camera down here to all my, my nerdy martial arts friends that are out here yeah i'll put the square here in front but I'm covering. Yep, there. There's the knees. It's open. There's the knees. Here's the center line that I'll be covering. Yeah, cat stance. There's the center line I'll be covering. But I can move. So you can move from horse stance to cat stance because you're covering this triangle. Yeah, yeah, there's that triangle. Yeah, go on. Even if you don't move the feet, yeah. But ideally, you move the back foot back a bit because it helps you cover that triangle we were talking about, yeah. Yep. And that's it. So play with that. Play with that uh, square. It, it can obviously it can be bigger than this. Yeah. This is just a this is just a guide. But oh yeah, just a bit about self-supporting. So if we're in that square, we'd be fighting here. Yeah, we can still move, we can still throw our kicks, we can throw our punches. But look, this is the splits. You can, your relaxed posture is the splits, you can hold it all day. If you push your foot forward, you've got, you've got a back posture. If you bring it forward, you've got a front posture. And literally, like the back posture on this triangle, with the hips, with the hips running in line. So my hips right now are running in line with this line that goes down here yeah see that line so it's just cool because it means all these postures you see people doing 
Yeah? Your, your postures should have physical lines within them that you can draw. Yeah? And it'll support your weight and it'll be really cool. Alrighty. So, here we go. Well, that's the end of that, brothers. I hope you enjoyed my, uh, my attempt uh, to talk about stances and stuff. Yeah, Nice and boring, but give it a try. Uh, and if you didn't know it, if you didn't know it, then yeah, give it a try. See how it works for you. Well, geez, see how it works for you. It, make it work for you because, um, yeah, that's pretty much the science of how, how the base, base of the stances work. Yeah, got to fight within that square on the ground. Yeah. Um, of course, you can look into it more than I've done there. You can do it. You can make the square bigger. You can make the square smaller. Don't over focus on the square. Don't like get too wrapped up in it. But but generally, if you didn't know that, and try it next with your try it next with your boxing bag. Um, when you're next using your boxing bag, try using that square on the floor that that I was telling you about. Um, front foot on the front left hand corner of the square. Back foot on the back right hand corner, and and see how it causes you to be able to uh, like reflect forces between your front leg and your back leg better because your hips are in line yeah following where is it following that square that i'm talking to you about yeah so give it a try always fight within that square yeah front foot there back foot there Loads of surface area covered, center of gravity in the middle. If your front foot and back foot are there and there, you've got awesome alignment between your hips, which means you can generate a lot of power. You've got a line, so you've got reflect self, you've got um you've got reflecting forces that you can use um, to, to do some good kicks, uh, some good movements. Yeah, great stuff. Um, well, I was going to head off, but um, does anyone have any like questions or anything about any of those points? Sorry if you guys tuned in late and missed the, missed the demo with the whole square and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, this, the, simple, the simple point of it is, is draw an imaginary square on the ground and, and stand in that corner and in that corner. Um, and it will really help your martial arts. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Where's the camera? So yeah, guys, that's the gist of it. Um, obviously, I just did a demo there, but if anyone's got any questions about the, the fighting arc or the fighting square on the floor, um, you look if if you're um, if you're interested in it, go have a look at some uh, some old Okinawan karate uh, books. And they're usually the, some of the old karate books like this, some by I think Nakayama are really good because the, the Japanese are very scientific. So their you know their whole basis of the understanding of stances is through angles, squares, circles, triangles on the floor. Uh, and but it's a really good it's a really good way of understanding um, the area you should be covering. You know you because you, you, you tell people about stances. Um, you know, you give a beginner the stance and you just tell them, oh, bend the front knee, bend the back knee. And, but, you know, stances are, stances are uh, you're using physics. And you guys know angles are so specific, yeah, that, like, for instance, if you build a bridge, so, you know, say you're standing, if you're not standing in the right angle, yeah, if you build a bridge that's like this, it, it's awesome, yeah, and it supports the weight of the structure above. But if you just change it to there, the, the load is too much on here and the bridge will just crumble. And that's exactly the same with the, with, with the stances. And that's why this square on the floor um, method that I've, uh, been, that I've been speaking about for the last 29 minutes. But I'll demonstrate again, if there's a few more people who've tuned in. Yeah. So that's a, that square's like, couple of my feet long but obviously you can stand in a bigger square so it's imagine it as big as you want but your basic first stance your first basic everyone's fighting stance well, sort of a, a horse stance or a, a, a bow arrow stance 
will be most effective with the back foot here and the front foot there, yeah? And that is, that is, you can see the area you're covering and also you've got cool lines here, yeah? That reflect in between the hips, yeah? That's the area you're looking to cover with all your stances. Now with, with this small uh, square I've got here, it's more like an hourglass stance. Yeah, but even then you can see that if I twist my hips in and the, and the enemy's in front of me, my center line is not here. My center line's in the middle of me and that's exactly where your center line should be. Yeah, that means I've got a strong base. I'm covering all this ground. That shows you another use of the traditional hourglass stance. Yeah, and if you're, if you're, if you're doing it over here, you know, this is how specific the forces are. If you're doing it over here, then you're doing it wrong. So that's why your instructor comes up to you, you know, and he goes, no, move your foot out or move your foot in. Because if you're doing it over here, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, you're not covering this, this area. If you're doing it out here somewhere, then again, look, you've lost the line. Sorry, you've lost the line. So, so really give this a go, guys. Just, just imagine, you don't even have to draw one, but just imagine this square and practice all your stances on this square and see how the, the different forces and lines reflect within your body. Yeah, it's a bit of self-discovery, a bit of training, but, but give it a go um, and see how, how well it works. Yeah, and see how actually every decent stance you do will conform to this pattern of square, triangle, uh, and intersecting lines here. It's really cool, uh, and it'll it'll make you cover your center line better because you you know you might re you might not be covering your center you might not even be standing in a stance where um, you might not even be standing in a stance where you're that mobile. I mean, if I if I give a demonstration, you know, I remember years ago doing shotokan karate, um, and obviously my my instructor is trying to trying to teach me the front stance, and, and 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 you know I'm standing in I'm standing in the front stance. Um, but my, my base isn't covering enough of this square. So if, you, if you're in a martial art and your front stance is pretty much flat, um, then just take a rethink on it. Uh, like I said before, your front stance being flat, i.e. your front foot and your back foot um, pretty much being in line, um, okay, it, it, it's got a benefit of covering the center line with your whole body. But stability-wise, it's not got a good benefit, yeah? Um, having said that, though, using this square triangle uh, method, if you do have a totally flat, flat front posture, um, you will benefit from these lines here. Because you will realize if you, do your, if you do your front, I know it sounds weird, but, but this, is the, this is the mainstay of like the fighting angle. If you do your flat front posture, on the angles of that square. So you imagine every time you do it, I mean, it's, it's weird to think, but even though your enemy's in front of you, um, you're, you're imagining the square here, and you're standing like that, you will see that it causes you to align your body, align your legs, and align your hips better, yeah? So it's a, it's a, bit, it's a bit out there, but what I'm basically saying to you is, like, um, if, the enemy's, if the enemy's here, if the enemy is here, and your front stance would usually be like this, if you use this square method, it'll be like that, but it'll force you to have nice alignment of your hips. So, in other words, it's a bit com it's not it's not complicated, it's just confusing. In other words, always stand on the edges of that square. Even if even if even if your enemy is dead in front of you, imagine the edges of that square and be like, boom. I'm on the edges of that square. That means between your hips, between your front leg and your back leg, you'll have great movement towards and away from your enemy, and you'll have awesome stability down the center of your spine. Yeah? Yeah? It also gives you mobility. It's that triangle. It's like the splits. In other words, what I'm saying to you, it's almost like the best martial arts stance you can ever do is like the splits. Yeah? It's the splits. At a forty, at, a, at an angle. Sorry, I don't know what the angle is. Whatever that angle is of being on the top left and bottom right of the square, I should go and find it out, and then I can tell it to you. But that is that is pretty much the mainstay of martial arts 
yeah, fighting and everything unwraps from there. Okay. Anyway, I've done enough of this now. I'm tired. So I'll see you guys around. Yeah, have a, have a good training. Uh, think about that. Have a go. It's, it's, it's meat and bones. Meat and bones and martial arts. Okay, cool. See you guys.